Welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Your host is the founder of the UK Travel Planning website, Tracy Collins. In this podcast, Tracy shares destination guides, travel tips, and itinerary ideas, as well as interviews with a variety of guests who share their knowledge and experience of UK travel to help you plan your perfect UK vacation. Join us as we explore the UK from cosmopolitan cities to quaint villages, from historic castles to beautiful islands, and from the picturesque countryside to seaside towns. Hi, and welcome to episode 75 of the UK Travel Planner Podcast. This week, I am passing the reins to Doug. Hello there. In this episode, I'm joined by guest Wes Weatherall. Wes chats to me about his two UK rail trips in 2022 and 2023 and his experience of itinerary consults with myself and Tracy for both of these trips. So without further ado, let's welcome Wes onto the podcast. So, Wes, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Thank you, Doug. Great to be here. (laughs) Firstly, can you introduce yourself and you know, share a little bit of information about you and where you live. Sure. Uh, well, as you mentioned, my name's Wes, and I am a, a former lawyer. Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> uh, but I, I recently retired, and I live in the Chicago area in Illinois in the States, so about 30 miles west of Chicago along a train line, oh, which beautiful. is not – it, it's 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 nothing like the trains we're going to be discussing. So. <laughs> so, and I know you've visited the UK before, but how many times have you actually been to the UK? Well, it, that was a great question, and I, I I had to sit down and think about it. So before I before I answer you, because my answer may be a little startling, I first visited the UK, uh, really London, in two thousand two. Uh, I worked for. I had worked for, and until recently, worked for a large UK-based insurance company. So the first time I came, I was all excited about getting to the UK, and I stayed at Brown's Hotel pre-renovation, and I was basically locked in a conference room in our office for the entire (laughs) week I was there, escaped one night, and had dinner directly across the street from Brown's. So Nothing really. I, I don't know whether that counts or not. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> but because because of the business connection, I ended up coming quite frequently. So mm. since 2002, maybe three or four times a year on business with an increasingly expanding itinerary. Like we generally we were generally in London, but I'd, I and my our offices were near the Monument and mm. Bank uh, that area. But we sort of stayed all over the place. Marble Arch, Oxford Circus, Tower Hill, Barbican Center, King's Cross. So, um, and and then later our meetings were more out of the city. So, for example, we were down in Horsham at, at South Lodge, the, that manor house uh, down there. And, and we stayed in Windsor at one point at the Sir uh, Christopher Wren Hotel. Uh, and I generally would tack a day or two onto the end of the trip for exploring the city or getting out of the city, mm. maybe Oxford or Cambridge. Cause I had some friends there in 2013. I brought my wife over for business and we did a little trip to Paris and Burgundy and then came back to London and kind of worked our way North ultimately up to um, Edinburgh and then came back to London. I'm not done yet. <laughs> in, <laughs> In, in 2016, and there's a reason I'm mentioning all this, but in 2016, I did a special assignment with the UK-based company, and I was back and forth uh, a number of times over a six-month period and did more day trips on weekends, anywhere I could go on the trains, maybe for an hour or two outside of London, yeah. so places like Bath or York or Dover, or things like that. And then with covid Everything stopped. Yeah. So in 2022, I had promised myself a proper farewell trip. And so did some planning, thought I knew everything I needed to know about coming to the UK and very quickly realized I was paralyzed because (laughs) I, I started to figure out what I didn't know. Yeah. And 
Um, so with, with your and Tracy's help, I was able to plan a trip last year and uh, did a general trip around uh, the UK and uh, thought so much of it, I asked and my wife surprisingly agreed to a second farewell tour, which I did <laughs> this year. So it, answering your original question, I think I've been to the UK on 61 different trips. Good grief. Uh, but 2016 kind of bumps the number up because I was back and forth mm. maybe 10 times during that that time period. So you'd think I'd know my way around <laughs> and wouldn't need to be talking to uh, a uh, travel planning podcast group. Oh, well, I'm glad you did because I'm gl pleased to meet you. Uh, so on your recent trips, you've been visiting a place in the northwest of England with a family connection, I believe. Yes. Uh, actually, as you mentioned earlier, my my last name is Weatherall. Yeah. And just one train stop east of Carlisle on the Carlisle-Newcastle line yeah. is uh, the parish of Weatherall. And so it's a little bedroom community. And uh, I had promised my wife that we would visit it. We did in 2013. I came back again. And uh, it's a lovely little village situated on the River Eden. I, I like to hike, so I hiked through the Wetherill Woods and the Wetherill Caves and stayed at the Crown Hotel Wetherill. And so it was a little bit of a family connection. I'm not certain what this say, would say about my ancestry, but when asked why I was there, when people there made the connection between the town name and my name, I said, well, my last name is Wetherill. And their response was, hey, that's the same name as our town. <laughs> oh, so, Doug, yeah. that's, the, that's the stock I, I think I come from. <laughs> Excellent. Now, next question. So, How did you go about planning your recent UK trips? Um, I know we had a lot to do with it, and I'm so glad that uh, you know we had the opportunity to help you, even with all your background and your many trips to the UK. So, yeah, how did you go about planning your recent trips? Well, that's a great that's a great question because, as I said, before I I ran into you guys, I really thought I knew my way around. I mean, I, I had figured out how to get to which train station and how trains generally worked and if I needed to get a reservation or if I didn't and the difference between first class and non-first class and stuff like that. I I I kind of felt like I knew what I was doing. Yeah. But I, I pretty quickly realized I had an aggressive itinerary, had no idea whether in real life this was going to work, and how it was going to um, – well, I didn't know if it would work in the first place. And second, I wasn't quite sure about the logistics when I got out of my circle of comfort. Yeah. And then – and then the last thing was, well, two things. The last thing I was thinking of was I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do when I got to some of these places that I had never visited. Yeah. And uh, and then to throw it in, throw it in the top as I'm planning this 2022 uh, trip, train strikes start happening, Gone. and I'm realizing a lot of the travel planning that I had done on my own through the National Rail Service or websites or things like that, I didn't know how to interpret what was happening. Yeah. And more importantly, I had no idea what to do if I ran into a problem along the way. Yeah, yeah. And I had never purchased a, a, a Eurail or BritRail pass, which is very straightforward once you know what you're doing. But when you don't, yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing. That's true. So – while I was planning the trip, I was sort of searching around for resources, and I stumbled into your Facebook group. And uh, I think the the topics that were raised, even the comments that were there, then your website. And then I realized, hey, there are other resources I could grab. So I, I bought the Best of Britain Travel Guide. I got your guide to UK trains, Yeah, uh, th that stuff. I it was searching around. I think I bought a couple other things. I'm not – Yeah. I'm not remembering, <laughs> but, um, but especially the train guide yep. really, 
it's one thing to go from Paddington to Oxford and and back in a day trip. It's another thing to plan a multi train line trip around the country sure. or or to 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 figure out transportation when you're going someplace, say for example, into the Cotswolds, where there isn't a train stop at every little village or hamlet that you'd want to stop at. That's true. So Tracy's suggestions around tours were a big help. Uh, for example, uh, last year I took a tour of a day tour of the Cotswolds and uh, decided that would be a great way to introduce my wife when she came with me, hopefully in the future. <laughs> uh, because I, I then figured out there is no way, there's no way that I'm going to be driving in the Cotswolds. Mm, yeah. And, and uh, blessings on anyone who can do that. But I, <laughs> I, I realized uh, it's, it, and it's not the roads or anything. It's, it's my driving skill or lack thereof. So basically I had a skeleton outline as, as you guys know, I had a rough skeleton yep. that I turned over to you and you guys said, well, that makes sense. So you had a couple of things where you said, well, maybe you should consider this. And, and that really helped refine both of the, these last two trips made them really uh, a success for me. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm pleased the resources were a benefit to you. So you had two reviews with Tracy and I. So how would you describe this experience, first, second time, or or both? Well, the, the first time, I was I was intrigued enough by your, by your resources to say, hey, I'd like to pick these guys' brains. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure that absent the train strikes, I would have done the first yeah. Uh, review. Having done it, though, I said, well, that was well worth it. And so I came back again for the second one this year. That's a- uh, I, I, you guys really exceeded my ex. I, is this I'm sounding like a commercial at this point, but the, <laughs> but it, it's actually it has the benefit of actually being true because uh, I have two itineraries for both of these last two trips. The one I actually took. And the shadow one that I thought I was going to take. Yeah. And I I think I would have limped into the finish line with the shadow one <laughs> in either case. But uh but in both instances, uh it was a huge help. Sure. And and as I said, I kind of approached the whole 2022 farewell trip as hey, I've been there, done yeah. it. And I kind of think I can get my way around. Uh, I had been up to Carlisle before, and um, but I, I realized, especially if you're if you're trying to get around. Well, if I'm trying to maximize what I'm seeing, yeah. As as an example, I I went to to Edinburgh, and with no, I mean, I did some research and everything. But I didn't talk to anybody. No, so when we got there, we got off the train and we were staying, I forget the name of the hotel on High Street. And my wife and I didn't know how to get from the train station to High Street. I see. We we were wandering around and and uh, eventually found some – we realized at that point it's it's high. <laughs> so we, we found stairs and got up to it. But – that's just a silly example of any number of things that uh, I wouldn't have figured out on my own. Yeah. And talking to somebody who has uh, been able to do this in the past is a big help. Oh, that's fantastic. So are the places that you visited uh, or experienced, what uh, what are your favorites on your recent UK trip? Well, the uh, a couple – I mentioned Weatherall. That's always kind of a highlight just yeah. for family and emotional reasons. And people should Google it. It's a very beautiful little town and uh, kind of quintessential. When I was there last year, I ran by accident. I ran into friends of mine, uh, a former roommate of mine from 30 years ago, oh, wow. who lives in Montana in the United States. And they were in Carlisle. Wow. And I, I talked them into coming out to Wetherill for a day and they they thought it was the most british place that they had visited but yeah but 
so so that's always a highlight. But you you would recommend it, Doug, the uh, Settle Carlisle oh, yes. train line. Yeah, one of my favorites. And 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 so I did that this year. I, I I sort of detoured where I was going to get to Leeds. You had also recommended the National Armory. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Which 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 really sadly was closed. Oh no, that that day. But but you had also it, walking from city center where I was, I walked to the to the museum just to get a sense of it, yeah. and realized eh, that was that was a, a distance. And uh, but you had recommended the the water taxi. That's right in Leeds. It's fantastic. Yeah. So so, so I, I found the water taxi and had just the best time with one other couple, a, a Canadian woman and her expat husband from Leeds who yeah. had moved to Canada back home visiting for the first time. Really? They're showing me around the city. It was, it was fantastic. Oh, what a great result. So, so but, but I'm sorry, I, I got from Leeds uh, onto the settle Carlisle yeah. line yeah. out of Leeds and it was a rainy day oh. and still absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it is, Just, it I can't imagine what it'd be like sunny, but even if, I, I mean, the weather didn't deter. So, and, and you had recommended reservations. I think on the line I had, yeah. I had a seat, which I didn't realize until I got there. I started thinking about it saying, well, there are going to be a lot of people on this line. And uh, so having a, prearranged seat facing the right direction on the right side of the train was, yeah. was great. And, right. and uh, you had recommended that I get off in um, Appleby That's right. and, and hike my way down to a pub. I forget the name of it, Yeah, but it, it, that was fantastic. Oh, so yes. Yes. That's, nice. that's just an exact. And then I, I, uh, so I took a, got off one train, took an hour and 15 minutes, had lunch, came back, went the west rest of the way up and, uh, so that was really a highlight for me because I, I just saw a lot of the stuff that I never would have seen, especially if, if I'm not a driver. Oh, it's in, beautiful in over there. Yeah, it really is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So I I think another place I'd mentioned was the uh, the Lake District. Mm-hmm. I, I, I stayed in Bonus on Windermere last year. And again, rainy day, like just raining buckets. Yeah. But there's still... I, I took a, a bus or a boat and a bus out to Coniston yep. and had to the Coniston Brewery, actually to the yep. Black Bear uh, pub out there for, for their Blackbird Bitter. Yeah. And uh, uh, it just, I, I felt like I saw a lot of what I would never would see. Oh, that's right. and, and this year, this year I stayed in Ambleside, as you know, yep. and uh, did a wonderful hike around the, Lake in Rydell, and then uh, ended up at the Badger Bar Pub for for lunch. Sort of the quintessential out for a walk through the hills around a lake. Saw yeah. a rainbow, visited a cave, ended up in a pub. Oh, so <laughs> it sounds like an ideal trip. It was great. Oh, that's good. So you benefited from particularly like the uh, Settle Carlisle. How our insider knowledge, places that we visited personally, and places you know we can recommend to others. Yes, I should explain for anybody who's listening that in addition to the consult and the and buying the uh, uh, the resource, both of which were very very helpful, uh, I, I peppered you with a few last minute questions. That's okay, yeah. and uh, th- thank you for indulging me. That's but uh, I I I'm surprised. And again, I I thought I understood the UK system, which is a lot better than the US. Uh, but the but the U.S. is pretty straightforward, you know. Yeah. Uh, this this has a little bit things that are nicer, but I was surprised at how many practical questions came up in the process of our planning. Yeah. Locations of train stations, how, just figuring out which train pass is the right one to get. Yeah. Uh, ter- terminology, even even when or when when reservations are helpful or when they're not. That's good. So that's when we recommended, you know, when you asked your questions and we made recommendations, do you feel all your questions were answered satisfactorily? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. And you answered questions I didn't have. Uh, I'll give you an example. The, I, we were talking a little bit about reservations mm-hmm. last year 
And I was very confused by the website and when I make reservations, how I do it. And uh, I don't even think I mentioned that. But in our consult, you suggested that when I arrived, I was coming from Heathrow to Paddington. You said, well, when you get to Paddington Station, just stop in at the, uh, the book, yeah. uh, Great Western yeah. thing and, bo- and book your reservations. And boy, for a 10-minute a queue and a very patient uh, agent at the train, I, I lined up all of my reservations and uh, – I wouldn't have thought even to ask that. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yes, you answered all my questions. Oh, that's great to hear. So how did you find, overall, how did you find using the UK rail system and the London Underground? Uh, very, very easy. Good. I I was, uh, and I, I've, I've had a, I was distressed as I was getting ready to leave this time because I couldn't find the Oyster card that I've always carried around. And I, I gave up on it, and I thought, well, I'm going to go contactless this this time. Mm-hmm. And so I have an Apple Watch, and I never, I I never had any problem just touching my watch to the uh, train system. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the the I had no problems with the Brit Rail Pass or or signing in and out of stations and. Uh, and in the rare case where I was confused, uh, there was somebody there to help. So it was on hand. I thought it was – I wish we had a sit train system like that in the United States uh, because yeah, you can't get there from here. No, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, that's fantastic. So thank you for those answers. And, uh, and the final question, we always end with the same question, of course. What is a top tip you can share with anyone planning a trip to the U.K.? For the first time, uh, plan. Yeah, Pl- planning makes makes the difference. Uh, if you don't, as I as I've mentioned, you guys have been immeasurably helpful in my itinerary planning. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, plan and consult with somebody. If not Doug and Tracy, find somebody who has been there and can tell you what you're doing. I back to your Facebook page. I get the biggest kick out of uh questions that are raised. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. But one one thing that I'm struck by is I'll see somebody who says, "Here's my planned itinerary. Does this work?" Mm-hmm. And I always think that's a great question and I'm grateful for people that respond yeah. by saying yeah, you're a little ambitious, or you're you're chasing from one side to the other, and <laughs> maybe you should rearrange it. I, I just think having a having a sense of where you're going without locking in every minute. Yeah, yeah, is because life changes. I I found myself in Liverpool last year on the day of the Queen's funeral, mm-hmm. and uh, actually I was going through Birmingham and was changing trains when the moment of silence came out or the two minutes of silence and the train station stopped. And I thought, I don't know that that would have happened in the United States, but it was great just to be flexible and be in the moment and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So plan, but leave some space for, Knocking around. Yeah, that's right. The expect the unexpected type of thing. So, Wes, thank you so much for t- chatting to us. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always. Every time we talk to you, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, we keep in touch and we can speak again in the future. Well, I'm I'm planning on it. My wife and I are planning a trip to Scotland, and w- w- can we make this more difficult for you? Scotland, and then we want to go to Cornwall. Oh, oh wow. So, not in the same day. <laughs> well, well not, not in the same day. No, and, and I'll give you more details about what we're thinking. But uh, thank you both very much. It's been a pleasure. And I hope we end up on the same continent sometime because I owe you a pint or two. Thanks again to Wes for agreeing to come onto the podcast this week. We look forward to chatting to you and your wife for an itinerary consult next year, Wes. You can find the show notes for this episode at uktravelplanet.com forward slash episode 75. But that just leaves myself and Doug to say for this week, 
Happy UK travel planning.